Welcome back to Digital Champions on Daily Ad Brief. I'm your host, Mary Therese Griffin, coming to you from Atlanta. Today, all the way from California, we've got Benjamin Shapiro, who's with us to talk about MarTech podcasting and all things marketing and social media. Thanks so much for being with us, Ben. How are you? MT, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm doing really well. How are you? I'm doing very well. Let's talk about MarTech and let's talk about the importance of what you do. Yeah, um, it's a growing industry. There, uh, There's a, a guy named Scott Brinker who put together a list. He's kind of the godfather of the MarTech industry. And he started with a list that originally was the MarTech 500 companies that use technology to help marketers um, sort of tape and glue their data and their marketing efforts together. And that list has grown to over seven or 8,000 companies now. So growing industry, um, and really it's a third of a third component of a marketer's budget, it's brand, it's people, and it's what technology solutions you have to help you market is really how modern marketing works today. What are some of the best practices that you can share about podcast marketing, for example? You, you know, uh, with podcast marketing, uh, I'm the host of the MarTech podcast. So obviously, we talk about the technology solutions on our show um, to actually market our podcast, you know, the, the biggest piece of advice that I have, there's really four channels of podcast growth you can, you can think about that. And this is really like any organic marketing channel, uh, viral, organic, paid, and partnerships, right? Those are sort of the four pillars of uh, content marketing. Virality, you know, you're trying to get people to share your content. And my secret sauce there is you're not really focusing on getting the people that are listening to the content to share. It's the people that are producing the content with you. In my case, I interview a lot of subject matter experts and getting them to share the content I create for them with their audience is a growth vehicle. Organic, producing a lot of content, being consistent, optimizing for all of the various app stores, not just Google, but in podcasting, optimizing for Spotify, optimizing for Apple's app store as well. Um, paid, we buy a lot of media in podcasts. So there's couple ways to think about podcast targeting. You know, who are the people that are listening? Like we try to reach marketers, but they also have to be podcast listeners. Um, and so, you know, by targeting podcast as a medium of advertising delivery, we know we've hit 50% of our targeting and then we just have to find the marketers within that subset. And the last is partnerships. I'd say that, you know, doing uh, your your outreach like this, uh, public speaking, working with other people that are in your industry is also a way to be visible to the other people that are listening to podcasts, um, you know, through other networking and associations. So those are the four pillars of podcast marketing growth. So there's two things that you, you two words that you use, uh, you used uh, audience and you used content. And, you know, this, this whole world of podcasting has just exploded over the last several years. Y you have to really know your audience and yeah, content is king. Am I right? You can't just say, gee, I want to have a podcast. Uh, you, you have to have those two things. Talk about why that's important. Yeah, you know, it's one of the things that is kind of the evolution of marketing and advertising in the last decade is that because we're oversaturated with media. Um, it used to be, well, it was the difficulty was getting your message in front of your prospects. And now it's getting your message to stick out because your prospects are seeing so many messages in so many channels all of the time. And one of the key components to doing that successfully is not just advertising to them, but actually delivering value. And content is a nice way to show thought leadership, deliver value without actually hard selling. And so we've seen a lot of, you know, specifically B2B brands focusing on content as opposed to paid advertising uh, because they're seeing higher results because the content lives on as evergreen. And once you master your content marketing channel, you've built an audience, you've built a reputation, you've built assets that get more valuable over time as opposed to paying a toll booth for all of your growth. And so we're seeing content become more important as we're seeing media become more prevalent in our lives. You know, I always like to joke and say, this is not your mom and pop's advertising anymore because it's certainly come a long way from, hey, I have this budget and I'm going to buy this TV show or put this ad in this newspaper that I like and that's going to be it. Let's talk about that evolution of how we got here. 
Yeah, you know, I think that there's a couple different phases. There is the pre-internet phase, like you're talking about, where we were looking at radio, television, print, out of home. And it was really, what does the message say to resonate? And how do you understand your consumer the most, as opposed to... When the internet came along, it was about digital distribution and things were kind of split 50-50, the yahoos and of the world and up to the rise of Google. Um, You could start doing digital advertising, but it was still very ad-based. Now we've hit a different point where we're sort of at media saturation. And so the advertising channel is obviously still effective, but not for every business Um, And and honestly, the business models have changed where the media is getting more and more expensive. So you need to find other creative ways to build a relationship with your customers, to educate them, to get them into consideration and also stay in front of them when they're not in the consideration phase, right? When they're still researching, not ready to buy, you still want to maintain and nurture that relationship up until the point where they're raising their hand and saying, okay, now's the time. And then they know where to go to actually buy your products and services. So we're seeing that advertising is getting more expensive. There's a time and a place for it. But obviously, organic and content marketing are the ways to stay in front of your consumers with less expense up front uh, and sort of more of a holistic and sustainable way. Other than the obvious of, of cost, what do you see, say, in the next two years as changes coming down the pike in the way that uh, marketing and advertising is done? Yeah, you know, I think that we're going to see more of the same trajectory that we're heading where people are consuming advertising in in short form media in the social networks. Obviously, there is your intent based search um, still going to be a powerful tool. I don't see Google and Facebook going away. Um, You know, I think that Amazon and App Store and the sort of verticalized search engines have become more and more important. So if you're an e commerce store optimizing for Amazon, Optimizing your Shopify listing, obviously important. If you're a media business, making sure that your podcast, like my business, shows up well in the Apple App Store, those verticalized search engines are more and more important. At the end of the day, you know, building content, staying present, consistently reaching out and giving your audience something to engage with so you can lengthen that relationship, I think is going to be a more powerful tool because advertising is getting more expensive. There is not more media, there's less. And we're seeing this big change with how data is being used. So if you can go out and have someone find your content and collect the first party data. It's going to help you with all of your retargeting efforts as well. That content's becoming more and more powerful as advertising comes more expensive and in some cases more elusive. And let's talk uh, finally about how you uh, plan and track uh, and analyze uh, what you're doing with uh, uh, digital marketing. If you don't mind, do you uh, even mind sharing with us the uh, tools that you prefer to use? Oh, sure. We, you know, when I'm talking to businesses about how they should be tracking their marketing efforts, you know, it's a, we're cobbling a bunch of tools together, understanding what the performance of their media is, understanding what's happening on their website, what the throughput is, what the sales are. And then those are different channels for every business. For my business specifically, where we are, you know, a new media business, we create podcast content. We look at things like our hosting platform. We use Art19 for our hosting um, there are some podcast analytics platforms that tell us, you know, who listen to our content or, or what the demographics are of our audience. Those are chartable and pod sites or two tools for analytics that we really love. And everything gets down to, you know, our sales effort with our sponsors and that's all CRM driven. You know, we're a member of the HubSpot podcast network. We love their CRM. Um, we use monday.com a lot for our product management. So we're kind of taping and gluing, and that's kind of traditional martechery as you take all of these different tools and the mastery of actually getting your business to run is how you're able to automate the data flow between those tools to make sure that you're consistently getting a good, strong signal of data so you know what's happening with your business. Benjamin Shapiro, that is why you are one of the subject matter experts we have on Digital Champions. We appreciate you being on the program today, and we hope you'll come back and see us again. MT, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. If you want to know what they're doing with Ben Shapiro and MarTech Podcast, all you got to do is check them out right here at dailyactbrief.com. I'm your host, Mary Therese, coming to you from Atlanta. We'll see you next time on more Digital Champions.